In 1989, a young Portuguese kid born in what's known as the South Margin of Lisbon in Portugal, still 11 months away from his professional debut at club level, was playing his first game in the green, yellow and red. Playing against country rival Spain in the under-17 Euros, that team would go all the way to the final, where that same kid would go on to score, leading them to becoming European champions. It was a blazing start for Luis Figo, but believe me when I tell you, it would only shine brighter as time passed. Just three months later, that same team finished third in the Under-17 World Cup, and these performances earned him a spot in the Sporting Lisbon squad. He would debut against Maritimo and play a few more games, but it wouldn't be until 1991, after he and Rui Costa formed a brilliant midfield partnership that would lead Portugal to become Under-20 World Cup winners, that he would become a frequent starter for Sporting as his fellow countryman Rui Costa started for city rivals Benfica. This would be known as Portugal's golden generation, and Figo would be the one to eventually become their leader. Despite Figo exhibiting enormous class and talent during the four years he spent at Sporting Lisbon, he would only win one single trophy, as despite being one of the biggest teams in Portugal, Sporting Lisbon always struggled to keep up with Benfica and Porto, who had just won the Champions League in 1987. Regardless, his displays on the pitch would put him in the spotlight of European giants, of which Figo chose Barcelona as his favorite candidate. And just like that, Figo was now partnering up with big names such as Pep Guardiola and Jorge Agui, as Barcelona seek to rebuild their squad. Despite having won the UEFA Cup Winners' Cup in that first year, the next season, more big names would join, such as Stoichkov, Ronaldo Fenomeno, Laurent Blanc, and fellow countryman Vitor Bahia and Fernando Couto. This team would win the Copa del Rey and the European Cup that same season, and despite Ronaldo leaving them, they would bounce back immediately with the signing of Rivaldo, Patrick Clivert, and as a young boy named Javi Hernandez would be promoted to the main squad. Despite all the big names in the team, Luis Figo would be the club's biggest symbol, becoming their captain, despite only being at the club for one season and being Portuguese, which was out of the ordinary for a club so heavily linked with their Catalan heritage. Just like that, they would win the Spanish league and validate their title by winning again the following year. Just like that, in 1998, Figo would watch the Catalan people from the balcony of the Palace of Catalan Generality, as he yelled onto the crowd, the white whip as they must congratulate us, champions of Spain. Their love for Figo was as intense as their hatred for Madrid. Amongst their fight for independence, the Catalan held on to football as a way to express their individuality to the rest of Spain. Figo was the heir to Johan Cruyff's throne. Figo was seen as their footballing head of state, an idol, and just as he led them in the war against Madrid, Figo became a symbol of betrayal and tragedy for the Catalan. In the summer of the year 2000, Figo would sign for Real Madrid in a world record transfer of 62 million euros. Much can be said about this. Some say Figo was a mercenary, that his hunger for money was more intense than his love for Catalonia. Figo himself told a different story. A story of someone who felt cornered by football bureaucracy as he struggled to distance himself from it. He has said that he did not trust Barcelona's new president at the time, and that led his agent to enter negotiations with other clubs and a man who was only an aspiring president at the time, Florentino Perez. As the story goes, his agent signed a contract with Perez that would only be validated if Perez became Real Madrid's president, which to the agent seemed highly unlikely at the time, but would help to manage negotiations with other clubs. Months later, as Figo enjoyed his summer holiday, he got the news that Perez had been elected. He got on the first flight he could, trying to revert the situation, but it was too late. He was now a Real Madrid player. With his image tarnished, Figo set on to make the best of his situation, and surely he did. In the next two years, Figo would win the Spanish league with Real, proving that he was truly the key to Barcelona's success and becoming a Ballon d'Or winner, after edging over Zinedine Zidane, who would join him at Madrid, and together they would win the Champions League as Figo would be crowned FIFA Player of the Year. Despite how well he did to maintain his form in the middle of this turmoil, some of the most iconic Figo moments during these seasons were due to the hatred showed to him by Barcelona supporters. No one will ever forget the El Clásico, where supporters came into the stadium with huge banners directing insults at Figo, calling him everything from Judas to Pesetero, which roughly translates to money hungry. But none of this compares to when they threw a pig's head at Figo while he prepared to take a corner. This moment will never be forgotten. At international level, it would be Zidane to make his mark on Figo's career, but this time in a negative way, as he scored the penalty which would lead Portugal out of the Euro 2000 semi-finals just three minutes before the end of extra time. The 2002 World Cup would be an even bigger stain in the history of Portugal's golden generation, as they dropped out in the group stages after losing against South Korea and the USA. 
Regardless, Figo had settled himself as one of the greatest of all time, a winger of supreme fine touch. It made it seem as if the world was in slow motion. Fullbacks were made to look as if they were stuck to the ground as Figo floated effortlessly through the fences, always managing an inch perfect cross into the box as if it were his destiny to get the ball where it needed to be. Figo was the prince of Portuguese football the first Galatico, the main focus of the biggest transfer scandal the world has seen to this day, but he clearly had one goal in mind, continuing his success with Real Madrid, but mainly bringing glory back to his country after the World Cup disaster. The stars seemed to have aligned for Figo. Real kept bringing in superstars as they signed Ballon d'Or winners Michael Owen and Ronaldo Fenomeno, as well as David Beckham, to join the already star-studded team comprised of players like, of course, Figo, Zinedine Zidane, Roberto Carlos and Raul González. The Galacticos seemed unstoppable on paper. They were the most mediatic team of all time, a joy to watch, but not much success would be found. Over the last three seasons Figo spent there, they would only win the league once again, as well as another Copa del Rey and an European Super Cup. A similar situation was found in the Portuguese national team, as the team was stacked with star players. Pauleta, who would become the all-time leading goalscorer for Portugal. Rui Costa, who played for AC Milan and had just teared the Serie A apart due to his partnership with Batistuta at Fiorentina. Deku, who was about to finish second in a Ballon d'Or, as well as a bunch of players who would win the Champions League that same year with Porto, such as Costinha, Ricardo Carvalho, Maniche, Paulo Ferreira, among others. And of course, it has to be mentioned, an 18-year-old wonder kid who had just left Sporting for Manchester United, who will soon have one of these videos focusing on him. Five-time Ballon d'Or winner Cristiano Ronaldo. The Portuguese future looked bright, and it would only look more promising as the Euros would be played in Portugal that year. Despite the first game loss against Greece, which looks now almost like foreshadowing, Portugal would stomp on every team who dared to face them as they got to the final against Greece. Remember when I said the 2002 World Cup was a stain on the Golden Generation's legacy? Well, Greece would win the Euro 2004 final. Portugal was defeated in their first ever Euro final, playing in their home turf. That might be the biggest upset in European football. The whole country was in tears. Even a young Cristiano Ronaldo had to be calmed down, as he was seen asking God for help during the match, and as he broke down crying after the final whistle. Figo returned to Madrid for his final year before moving to Inter Milan, where he'd once again lead a struggling team to glory. It had been 18 years since Inter had won the league, but Figo would take a major role into leading them into their late 2000s dominance, as he would win the league in each of the four seasons he spent at the club before retiring. Before this happened, he would still take one last shot at World Cup glory, being once again thrown off the tournament in the semi-finals in a minimum margin loss due to a penalty converted by Zidane. His biggest partner in the pitch was also his biggest rival, constantly facing each other in international football and firing for the podium at the Ballon d'Or. They were certainly one of the greatest and most interesting duels football has ever seen. As we reach the end of this look into Figo's legacy, I would like to introduce the last element of this video series. In each one of these I would like to rate the player's careers, taking into account a wide range of parameters in a scale of 1 to 10, that depend on the player's position, and where 1 means average for a world-class player, and 10 should only be given to the greatest ever players at that given attribute. So for a winger like Figo, we would take into account finishing, where Figo would get a 5, as he never scored more than 14 goals in a season. Despite this, when given the chance, he was capable of scoring from long range and even scoring set pieces. For the second attribute, playmaking, he would get a 10, as he is the second highest assist provider in La Liga, only behind Lionel Messi, and of course he provided perfect crosses like no other. For dribbling, he will get a 9, as despite being an amazing dribbler, I still feel like he did not reach the technical prowess of, for example, Lionel Messi. For speed and physicality, he will get a 7, as despite not being very tall or fast, he was a true warrior, never letting go of the ball, a true old school winger. For the fifth element, we will take into account mentality, which is an attribute in which Figu clearly excelled as he kept his form despite all the pressure that was put onto his shoulders during all the controversy. For this, he gets a 9. Now, we will take into account a more character and personality-based attributes that define a legacy. 
we will take into account consistency. Figo gets an 8 on this subject as he won the league for each of his three main clubs and was consistently helping teams reach the top. Another factor to be taken into account is flair. Some players are just fun to watch, most great players are, but some players like Ronaldinho or Neymar just take it to a whole new level. Fig wasn't the type to use crazy skills in his time, but he had another kind of flair. He was graceful, if you would put it that way. And that will be taken into account, just that will earn him a 7 out of 10. For the next attribute, let's call it a trophy cabinet. Players like Ibrahimovic are iconic, but haven't won many major trophies. Few never won a senior international trophy with Portugal, and only managed one Champions League, but he did get league titles with three different clubs, so he'll get a 7. For this next element, we'll take into account longevity, which Figo certainly had, playing at the highest level for 20 years, and for this, he will get an 8. Lastly, the icon factor. This is hard to describe, but some players just lack it. They seem to end up forgotten, no matter how amazing they were. And sadly, Figo is close to being one of those players. His legacy seems to have been sort of forgotten in the new generations. We remember all the Galáticos. Ronaldo for his goals, Beckham for his bigger-than-life personality, Roberto Carlos for his power, Zidane for his presence on the pitch, but Figo seems to have faded substantially, despite how amazing he truly was. For this, he can only get a 4. Perhaps the drama surrounding his transfer overshadowed his career. Instead of being remembered as the man with the golden crosses, he is seen as the guy who betrayed a whole city. Taking all of this into account, he gets a total of 74 out of 100, which will temporarily place him at first or last in the ranking, depending if you're a half full or half empty glass type of person, as no other players have been taken into account. So this is it for today, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you enjoyed this new series and that I am able to bring you many more episodes. This is Daily Dose of Football, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Maybe comment if you think I misjudged Figo in some attributes, and I'll see you next time. Bye.